This talk is to do with psycholinguistics. It's the art of the use of words, repetition of scientifically aligned words and phrases which alter your behavior. It's a well understood science at the top. It's implemented in all media every day. The public are completely unaware of it, really, but they certainly are downloaded with the ideas that are produced and they act it out. They bring it out into their behavior. They act it out into reality. Psycholinguistics is the term used. Very, very ancient science, well understood. To give an easy example of psycholinguistics and the best way to get it through to the public, is either through official repetition through media, news, politicians do it all the time as they come up with neologisms and repetitive phrases like weapons of mass destruction, and then all the other big guys at the top say the same thing until they speak a non-existence into a reality. This is how it's done. However, back in the 50s and 60s the envelope was pushed through entertainment. If we look prior to that era, the male characters in movies were masculine. They were masculine men who didn't play little games, didn't act like children caught in some guilty act when they were confronted by their wife or their girlfriend, as they do in all the comedies, and so on, that have been put out since. They had people like the male character in Gone with the Wind, who, when the head game starts, he says, well frankly Scarlet, I don't give a damn, and he was quite cool, calm, and collected. Hollywood put out that type because they needed that kind right up into the Second World War. That's why you were given that stereotype, that character to emulate as a hero type figure the quiet man who's always reserved but made the right decisions and was self controlled and respected. Then it suddenly changed, you see, after World War II and stepping up into the 50s with the music scene coming on as they really gave a separate musical sphere for teenagers. We see something interesting happening and this was discussed in books on the subject back at the beginning of the 20th century in the communist writings, this very technique to be used on the young with the use of music to implement the use of thoughts and agendas. In the 50s and 60s we changed from the regular kind of male entertainer in music and in acting, and then we got the skinny guy, you know, with the drain pipe trousers, as they called them, and we seen it with Buddy Holly and different ones that came out of nowhere and were heavily backed, and I always find there's a story behind the one that's given. However, for this particular period, the object of marrying or mating up to marry was altered, carefully, quietly, to redefine the position of the men and it was done with the introduction of certain words, which alters the perception of the totality of the person. We find that in the songs, you don't find the man singing about the girl or the girl singing about the man, Suddenly everything became baby. They called everybody baby. Now in psycholinguistics, regardless of what you think it means superficially, because people don't think beyond the superficial if it hits them, it wasn't just meaning that you were cute. A baby is still a baby. A baby is a young, immature human being and a baby is a helpless thing. A baby has no maturity and no real decision making, as we would say in a social structure. When this was going on, dozens and dozens of brand new magazines just appeared on the shelves, heavily backed, professional companies behind them. Now it's been admitted that some of these were CIA backed, and probably owned in fact, but at the time in the 50s, 60s and 70s, increasing on upwards, 90 odd percent of all magazines were aimed at women, because, as I say, in psychology, which is well understood, women can be changed easier than the male in a cultural sense. They're more apt to try something new and there was a plethora, a mass avalanche of experts on every topic imaginable, and at the time even unimaginable, telling people, how to behave, what their sexual life should be like, what their relationships should be, what a man should be, what a woman should be, and never-ending, never-ending babble by experts. Now tie that back to The Impact of Science on Society by Lord Bertrand Russell, the big key player along with Huxley in the Tavistock Institute for World Agendas and World Culture Alternations. When he said much of this stuff he talked about the alternation of culture through the use of experts, training society that nothing is of value unless it's said by an expert. It was all to stop us thinking for ourselves and he said that one day a woman wouldn't be able to change the diaper on a child without expert advice and that's happened. 
that's actually happened. Now, of course, people don't even know how to cook anymore, male or female. It's terrible, but that's the reality we live in. Expert advice on everything and this was to alter culture and to make everyone dissatisfied with their own particular situation in society. The man stopped being the hero type figure, the leader, the one who was quiet and calm and made decisions. That's the stereotype perfection, which probably never existed, at least not on the whole, because most men were under the same system working for the system, and therefore, subservient to the system. However, that was the stereotype they had to look up to, was the one who was quiet and calm and collected and didn't blurt out his emotions. All these magazines in the 50s onwards, 60s, 70s, 80s to the present time started talking about the man who was sensitive and yet strong, who could cry and yet laugh, and all these opposites mixed into the one, heavily pushed, this kind of stuff. If old Joe there was the quiet guy who came home and spoke when spoken to and was reserved, well, suddenly he was abnormal according to the magazines. This created a dissatisfaction in his mate, you see, because she was after a fictional perfection that was getting broadcast through television and talk shows and magazines. People are being indoctrinated and have been indoctrinated to make them terribly unhappy because society must alter all of the old ways to bring in the new world order, the new world order for the new era, where there is no marriage. The government wants direct contact with the individual. They don't want a family in the way or family members in the way. They don't want the remnants of any clan system that might exchange ideas amongst themselves and say, well hey, this isn't right. No, they want you, like Orwell's 1984, to be quivering waiting for them, the government, who is always watching you, the individual to send their contacts directly to you and you'll have no one to share your thoughts with. You'll be socially isolated. That's the technique that's been used. Now what did men get during this time? Well, they came as I say from the old style, the hero type, the quiet one, of which is fictional. At least in the perfection that they showed, because everyone who is subservient in the system cannot be, he can't guide his own life. He's still got to go along with the rules laid out that he was born into, the system that he was born into. However, it began to change into this silly immature type character and I must admit I didn't watch comedies much. They replay a lot of the old ones today on television and it's really phenomenal to watch the debasement of the male, who is always a silly little man, a little boy really, no matter how old he is, who's obsessed with sports, who's always lying like a child and getting up to no good and he's treated like a child by the family, the children, and the wife. This is the new role model. It's quite amazing to see how this has actually worked in society until men are floundering. They have no guideposts and with the single parent families, which again were massively pushed, because no person who doesn't understand this can be happy with a partner. This system is geared to make you unhappy with everything. Everything that you buy is not enough. It'll make you happy for five minutes, then you have to buy something else. If capitalism as it's pushed worked, we'd all have all we needed. The last thing that you'd bought would have made you happy forever but it doesn't. It's a big lie, they sell you mythologies and fantasy. However, the partner you're with would also be the one that you would be bonding to, but here you have how many thousands of magazines and talk shows telling you that you can't be happy because this and this and this makes it so. It's a war, an ongoing war, where neither male nor female benefits. It's not meant to benefit the people at the bottom. There's always an ongoing war, like the war room that they have in the Skull and Bones Temple. It's actually called the war room and it isn't just war of the elite families to take over the natural resources of the world. That is one part of it. They've been doing that for centuries. It's also a constant war on the public, men women of all ages, all ages groups. It's a constant ongoing war and that is why the people cannot possibly be content within this structure, bad as it is. They can find no peace within themselves, and as you find no peace within yourselves, your anchors are all broken, and you're floundering in the seas, you get tossed all over the place with all the things that you're told will make you happy. There's nothing on television that is real. Nothing.
Look at Dr. Phil, the magician. The magician who comes on like a superstar and everybody howls and screams as he comes on the stage and he sort of walks in that stiff way of his, and he solves everybody's problems in an hour, on TV, that is. It's not real. It's not real and look at all the backup staff that do all the investigations, preliminary stuff, etc., to make you think that the man is going to sort it all out. Well, he's trying to make a couple fit into a pre-existing system, where we expect through movies, etc., to have a happy ending, so when the couple are breaking up and no matter what's happening, the idea is to keep them together and keep the misery going on forever and ever. Believe me, that is the worst thing you could possibly do, but that's what psychiatry's function is. Psychiatry and psychiatrists are trained that when the patient comes in, suffering from whatever he's suffering from, you medicate them and all the rest of it. They don't do so much psychotherapy as they used to. They rely mainly on various drugs and so on, because the stress of modern living, again the floundering on the high seas with no anchors, you're cut off from your old culture, your purpose, your direction. To hate, as I say, to hate brings on to the hater the characteristics of the one they hate. It's an interesting observation that many women who were bombarded with the power trip of feminism, which again did not come from the grassroots. It doubled the tax base. It split the families. It's been great business for therapists and cult groups and all types of new age gurus who pretend to have the answers to their own happiness, but many of them who tried the lesbian movement. Why would you try and become the very thing that you hate?